and she was very pretty. And uh, Jimmy Gunnels ended up marrying, uh, he was a guitarist, remember he used to play the guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ended up marrying Jennifer O'Connor, Con Connolly, or on 160th Avenue and 100th Street. Yeah, I don't remember her. Yeah, she was a lot younger than us. And Donnie DeVito. Donnie DeVito, yeah. I, I was good friends with his brother, brother Bobby DeVito. <laughs> He was a, Bobby DeVito was a good guy. That's a different DeVito family. No, no same DeVito. They were brothers. There Don, was James, Joey, Donnie, and there was no. No, there, there was no James DeVito. There was Bobby DeVito, Donnie DeVito, and maybe there was one more. Joey DeVito the and Joey De, right? Joey, Bobby, and Donnie. Those are the three brothers, DeVito brothers, and James. I don't remember any James. Yeah, well, he was like a one down from Joey. And uh, Bobby was a little a couple of years younger than us, but yeah, he was a really good guy. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. We have a fender bender. We have a fender bender on US 1. We're in the Florida Keys, baby. I forgot to tell you oh, that. Oh, we're not in Cebu? In Cebu? I thought we were in Cebu at the buffet. No, that was this morning. We were oh, in. okay. The, I'm doing the buffet in the freaking... I'm doing the breakfast buffet, and it, and and it's the sun is coming up behind me, and, and it's 8 o'clock in Cebu at night, and I'm going, oh, shit. I'm doing a breakfast buffet, but it's 8 o'clock at night. How am I going to explain this? So I just, just said... Call, call it a live stream instead of a live stream. A what? A live stream. L-I-E? L-I-E stream. <laughs> I did a lie. L-I-E stream. And I said, oh, I think the battery's going. Jack Thompson said, nice waffle maker. <laughs> yeah, that was... I, I screwed up big time doing that. Now people are going to scrutinize my video and go, what? How could you be making dinner? How could you do a live stream at eight o'clock at night in Cebu and you're having breakfast on the, it's a, not a live stream, it's a lie, L-I-E stream. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yep. So we're going down to the Florida Keys. We were just reminiscing. Last night, we were reminiscing in the bedroom all the names of the people we knew as children because Carl and I have known each other since we're 11 years old. Leanne Rickenbacker. Reichenbacker. Reichenbacker. Reichenback. Reichenback, right. And uh, Tommy Gadomski. Yep. And, and, and of course, Mike's good friend, Eddie Schweiker. Eddie Schweiker, right. Eddie Schweiker, right. Just cool. You and him were pretty tight. Yeah, we were friends. Well, we were friends since we were really young, too, now. All that other stuff that happened later, but he was, he was, Eddie was a little bit screwed up in the head. Yeah. And if I say you're a little screwed up in the head, maybe to other people you might be a lot screwed up in the head. <laughs> but I mean, you know, he came from a family, crazy family. Yeah. Uh, so, um, let's see who else there was. Uh, let's see who. Who else would be memorable? Name some memorable people. Well, there was always Drew Ogdebean, Rudy uh, Santa Cor, you know, they were good. Anthony Gardino. They were good guys. They were the good guys of the group. Yep. Drew Ogdebean, Soggy Oggy. <laughs> Rudy became a I don't, Rudy, police Drew, officer. Obviously. Police officer. Yeah. Drew was a sanitation man inside some school he was just like a sanitation engineer in a school Anthony Godino he became a famous uh, hairdresser Anthony Godino yeah Godino yeah he uh, opened up a beauty salon in Manhattan and he became hairdressers for the rich and famous where he would they would take him on the plane and really to Paris was and, he gay no 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 he was straight as a button um, in, in fact, he invited me to his wedding, but I was really screwed up at the time, and I didn't go. I should have went, but um, I didn't. I, it was a real fancy wedding, and I didn't have a suit. And I I didn't go, and after that, we lost touch. But uh, yeah, no, he was he was straight. And uh, remember, remember junior high school, uh, Mr. Carbo. Yeah, the gym teacher, the black guy. Yeah. He looked like no, he like, wasn't black. Yeah, no, Mr. Mr. Carbo was not black. He was a Oh, no, the, that was the white guy, right? Mr. Carbo was somebody else, right? 
there was a black guy who was really like an Olympic, uh, some sort of Olympic champion. Mr. Carbo was white, yeah. Uh, and then there was Mr. Martin, Martin Mr. Yeah. Mays, Mays, and and Carbo. Those are the only three I remember. In, uh, well, the the black guy taught guys. science. He also taught oh, yeah. science. I don't and, think I ever had him. Yeah, he. Yeah, I liked him. He was a good guy. Um, and then there was uh, Giorgio Di Stefano. Oh, hot, hot bait. Hot, so hot. How she hot. was beautiful. She was hot. I always, I was in love with Jojo Di Stefano, and she was, she was very friendly towards me. You know, not in a romantic way, but she used to drive me. To, and she was the first one to get her license. And she lived right, you know, practically around the corner from me. So she used to drive me to school and home from school. And I remember being so much in love with her, but knowing I could never have her because she was way out of my league. Did you ever play spin the bottle with her? No. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and JoJo and uh, Leanne and Jeannie Pargay and Tommy Gadomsky and... Uh, I'd give anything to kiss her. Roberta, Roberta Alaprandini. 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 Al Alaprandini was her name. Yeah. Roberta Alaprandini. Yeah. She had, she had, she, she had, was in our sixth grade class. Yeah. Sixth grade, Mrs. Sanders in P in PS. Belle Sanders. Huh? That was her name, Belle. Belle, Belle Sanders. Yeah. yeah. She was cool. Yeah. Uh, no, she wasn't cool. We used to, but you don't remember we used to go wah wah wah. We used to piss her off, and we did it all. The more, the more we. It, it, it would, we did it the more it would piss her off and she would get angry at us and we would just do it more we go wah wah whenever she yelled at somebody we go wah 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 you don't remember that that's funny man. I'm not I wasn't I'm not an aggressive person you were a very aggressive oh, young yeah. man yeah right aggressive tell people what I was like when I was a kid he was just as crazy as he is now trust me <laughs> and Carl I told Carl a couple of days ago yeah He's, he always was a happy person. Like, if things didn't work out, I remember Carl telling me in 2001 or 2002 when he came to the Florida Keys, he goes, when life dishes you out lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> it's quite a famous quote by Carl. I didn't make it up. <laughs> that wasn't your quote? No. You used it like it was your quote. No, 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 no. I no. took it as your quote. Oh, okay, though. well, then it was my quote. <laughs> no, that's that's a famous saying. Yeah. So now when people dish me lemons, I freeze them and I put them in a slingshot and shoot the suckers <laughs> back at them. Yeah. Here's some lemonade, baby. Or you piss in a jar and tell them to drink some lemonade. <laughs> Carl's coming to the Philippines shortly. He'll be there. Yeah, I don't he's think gonna so. be, Yeah, he's <laughs> going to be visiting the Philippines. And he, he, wait, wait, he's, he's living in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale. And um, I, I told him how hard it is to live in Florida because we're at an age where we're not going to make a lot of new friends. And most of the people that you're going to come in contact with, especially in South Florida, are not going to be, uh, they're, you know, they're fair weather friends. But um, he'll be in the Philippines shortly. He just doesn't, you know, hasn't caught on to it yet. Well, I would go to the Philippines, but... There's something that you're not allowed to do there that I like to do every day. So, and I don't think that's ever going to change. So I don't know if I'm going to I'm going to make it down there. <sighs> so, ladies and gentlemen, so here's what here I, our itinerary today is going to be go snorkeling. Oh, uh, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to stop at Napa and get that alcohol pen. All right. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going snorkeling today with Snorkely Porkley, better known as Mike Manatee, and uh, we're going to go see some underwater life. Tell him, tell him how I used to do the gym class. He, <laughs> we used to go to gym in junior high school, and I never took it seriously. Nobody took it seriously. Mike was the only one that took it seriously. We'd do exercise, and he'd be there. Kissing the teacher's ass, doing his exercises, and you know, and no, nobody gave a shit. Mike was the only one who gave, gave a shit. In, in On the pegboard, the pegboard going up the pegboard, climbing the ropes, up and down the ropes. Yeah, 
And I wasn't always snorkly porkly. <laughs> and uh, let's see, what else? Did, oh, the matches. The match. <laughs> this is the best story you're ever going to hear. We were, <laughs> I had a, a garage, a wood frame garage. No walls or anything, just wood. The walls were wood, the floor was wood, everything was wood. So we used to we used to go to the to the um A and P and buy boxes of stick matches and stick them in the cracks of the wood and line them up like about two feet long and light it and watch the flame travel. What could go wrong? <laughs> what could go wrong with that? I almost burned my garage down. Two feet. Sometimes <laughs> we go like try to get from one end to the other. Yeah. So we would put the matches in the it was tongue and groove flooring and we put the matches in the tongue and groove. From we would we would use as many as many as we could. And then we would we would move, you know, align them so they were the perfect distance for one match to light another match. And we'd light them off at the same time. Yeah? Uh huh. And it would be a race. Right, right. Yeah. That's right. And then one day we we did we did two rows of matches. <laughs> How smoky was it up there? Oh man, it was smoky, and <laughs> and and our clothes would reek from phosphorus and and all that smelly stuff. And I used to try and dodge my parents, get in the house to change my clothes so it wouldn't stink. Except for that time your father came home and saw the smoke coming out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we I caught shit for that, that's for sure. We had the whole, the, we just let off a couple of boxes, maybe, I don't know, however many matches, two, three boxes, and the smoke was billowing out the window, and just at, at that moment, his father pulled up into the driveway, <laughs> was looking up, we were looking down, and he was looking up, and we were looking down, and he was looking up, and then he goes, Carl! <laughs> he came up into the top of the garage. He was he was living. He said, what are you doing? It's a wooden garage. Fazio, you go home. <laughs> yeah, he said to me, maybe you shouldn't hang out with that Fazio kid. He's trouble. I go, yeah, Dad, you're right. <laughs> and whose idea was it with the matches? <laughs> but I don't know. Whose idea was, was it? Your Probably idea. Probably mine, yeah. yeah. I would ne I would never do something like that. No, never. Unless somebody instigated you. Unless somebody said, let's do this, and I would say, okay. Okay, what about the time that they were giving away free samples in the mail? I don't know, maybe it was toothpaste, oh, okay. no, it was shampoo. <laughs> so, me and him... <laughs> We, he went on one side of the street, I went on the other side of the street, and we'd walk up the block going through people's mailbox so we could steal the, the toothpaste. <laughs> and then somebody saw us and we both ran. Remember that? Yeah. Somebody saw and we cut out and we ran. Uh, and you said to me, Carl, keep walking and then turn around and go the opposite way and start running. And you ran into some somebody's... Um, you know backyard and I stayed on the street and she followed me and it turned out to be one of my neighbors and then she saw me go in my house she goes oh now I know who you are okay I know who you are that was something and there was one other thing that we did oh TSS we used to borrow items out of out of TSS you know Times Square stores the, the department store in our neighborhood and uh, we go in there and borrow stuff and one time, I got caught borrowing stuff. I don't think you got caught, but I got caught borrowing stuff. And I uh, got into a lot of trouble for that. Did the police come? I I think I got a um, an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal. So I think I did get arrested for that. What about the time you stole the police car? Oh, I never stole the police car. Yeah, I heard the story. I heard the story you were... Uh... You were hallucinating on in, on the ice in Central Park. That's Graz. That's not me. That was Graziano. Yeah, that was Graziano. Well, he dove into the water. He was he was on this mind trip, and um, was he tripping he, in the no tripping zone? He was tripping in the no tripping zone, and he wanted. He thought if he jumped into the lake in Central Park, he could cleanse the sins of the world. And so he went and did that. He jumped into the lake in Central Park. and But unfortunately, it didn't cleanse the sins of the world because the world is still full of sin. 
And did the police come? No, I don't think the police came, but he was wet for the rest of the day. I heard a whole different story. Okay. You want to hear the story I heard? Yeah. I heard that Carl was tripping in a no-tripping zone, and that he fell through the ice in Central Park, and the police came, and Carl was put into the back of the police car, and then he, he went into the front of the police car, and he was going to drive the police home to his father's house. I don't know where you heard that story, but uh, that never happened. Oh, uh, <laughs> God, there's somebody's telling stories here. No, I, I would own up to that if it was true, but no, that never happened. No? No. My mistake. Maybe you're confusing me with somebody else. Yeah. So, that might have happened. That was a long time I, ago. I remember I used to love to go on the boardwalk, and I'd buy a half pint of old Mr. Boston lemon-flavored gin. That was my favorite. And, and I'd get a, a bottle of soda or something, can of soda, and I'd guzzle the gin and then wash it down with the soda. And I used to get messed up, boy. That was my drink of choice. Old Mr. Boston's lemon-flavored gin? Yep. Old Mr. Boston was the brand, and it was lemon-flavored gin. Wow. Yeah, half pint. I used to buy a half pint. That's that what? That's four ounces, eight ounces. That's eight ounces. That's a eight ounces. That's a lot, man. Yeah. That's a lot of liquor. Definitely is. Yep, the good old days. What else did we do underneath? Oh, we used to fish off the bridge, the new bridge. Yep, and you used to jump off that bridge going swimming. I used, I used to always want to do that. Never had enough nerve to do it. Finally, I did it once and scared the shit out of me. I said, oh, okay, been there, done that. I'm not doing that again. But Mike used to, he used to not only jump off the bridge, he used to climb up on the railing and jump off the bridge. We'd bring it like five foot higher. Yeah. Into the most nastiest, scummiest water that people's, you could see the shit going from people's houses into the canal. And, and that's where Mike used to swim in. Yeah, you never swam in there. I did, but not a lot. Yeah, but the difference between me swimming in there and Carl swimming in there, I used to swim with my mouth closed. <laughs> oh, I and I drank the water. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he 